Hello everyone, a while ago I posted a video of me doing a VO2 max test. I was finally able to go through the data and today I'm presenting my fat max results that came out of the VO2 max test. But first I want to do a quick refresh of the concept of respiratory quotient or RQ. Because we measure oxygen consumed and CO2 released during the test, we can determine how much sugar, basically glucose, and fat is used under resting and exercising conditions. The RQ is determined by dividing VCO2 by VO2. When the RQ equals 1, it means that glucose contributes 100% of the fuel used during exercise. When the RQ equals 0.7, it means that the fat contributes 100% of the fuel used during exercise. So anything between 0.7 and 1 represents a mixture of glucose and fat. So under resting and low intensity exercise conditions, the RQ should be closer to 0.7, meaning that more fat is used for fuel. If the intensity of exercise increases, then the RQ also increases, and when glucose and fat contribute equally to energy production, or 50-50%, the RQ equals 0.85. And this is called the crossover point, which normally occurs at approximately 70% of the VO2 max. So the other thing that can be determined is the fat max or the point at which the maximum rate of fat oxidation occurs. So the classical view based on evidence is that fat max is achieved at approximately 60 to 65 percent of VO2 max and that at any exercise intensity above 85 percent of VO2 max fat oxidation is practically zero. Also, it has been shown that endurance-trained athletes have a fat max ranging from 0.5 to 0.6 grams of fat per minute. So how do I fit in this context? In other words, how much fat do I use during exercise? So this is of particular relevance to me because since 2018 I have been on a low carbohydrate diet and also doing all my training sessions under fasting conditions. So the idea was to force my body to use fat for fuel and spare glycogen. So in this graph I show my fat max in grams per minute in the y-axis as a function of exercise intensity or percentage of VO2 max on the X axis. I was delighted to find out that I spent most, mostly fat for fuel during resting and exercise. In fact, my lowest rate of fat oxidation, which is 0.53 grams per minute, at 25% of my VO2 max is what most people have as the highest rate of fat consumption when trained. So my fat max 1.61 grams per minute, which is more than three times the average and was achieved at 77.5% of VO2 max. From this point on, the rate of fat oxidation progressively reduced. However, I was surprised to learn that even very close to my VO2 max, which was approximately 98% of the VO2 max, I was still using 0.69 grams of fat per minute. And my next question was, how do I compare with endurance athletes, either on a high carbohydrate low-fat diet 
or on a low carb, high fat diet. So here we go. In blue are data from two studies reporting fat max values for athletes on a high carb, low fat diet. In red are data from two studies reporting fat max from athletes on a low carb, high fat diet. In green is my data. I just plotted it in the same graph. So as you can see, my numbers are well within the values of endurance athletes adapted to a low carb, high fat diet. And my fat max was actually slightly higher than the average and remained elevated even longer during the VO2 max test. So what do we learn from this? What's the summary of this observations? So my data is actually proof that you can manipulate your metabolism through diet and exercise to enhance the ability of your body to use fat for fuel. This can be very good to keep your body fat percentage reduced and within a healthy range. By the way, my body fat percentage ranges between 10 and 12%. Also, if you are an endurance athlete looking for ways to spare glycogen and minimize the negative impact of glycogen depletion during endurance events, it might be worth considering a low carbohydrate diet and conduct your training sessions under fasting conditions. This will allow you to use more fat during exercise and rely less on glycogen. So there is a lot more to talk about my VO2 max test data. There is a lot of valuable, very useful information to get from that. But I will present in future videos, videos because this will become very long. So for now, thanks for watching. Leave your comments below telling me what you think about this. And I'll see you in the next. Bye for now.